Hello there, and welcome to yet another episode of the Love, Happiness, and Success podcast. I am particularly excited about today's topic because today we're going to be talking about something that I think is so common for many couples, which is how to repair a relationship after a really bad fight. I think all couples go through this and so many regrettable things can happen during a bad fight. But what a lot of people don't realize is not just can you repair your relationship after a bad fight, you can really and truly go on to create a relationship that is stronger and happier than ever before, not just in spite of having a bad fight, but really because of it. Um, Fighting is oftentimes a doorway for real and lasting growth and positive change in a relationship if you know what to do with it. So that is the topic of our podcast today. But first of all, a couple of very brief announcements. Here at Growing Self, we have some exciting things going on lately. We are gearing up to do a new round of our Lifetime of Love Premarital and Relationship class. We have a few new sections of this class becoming available starting in January. Um, We typically don't host this class over the holiday season just because of scheduling and all of that but starting in January we will have sessions available at our Broomfield office location at our Denver office location and most excitingly we're going to be offering this class online as well so no matter where you are in the world you too can create a lifetime of love so that is all all our big announcements at at growing self and let's just dive in to our topic again today we're talking about how to repair your relationship after a really yucky fight so first of all one of the most important things to stay aware of um, when you are fighting is keeping in mind why people fight People have conflict with each other, and it sounds so so ironic, but people fight when they want to be heard and understood by their partner, and they feel frustrated. They feel invalidated, or they feel unheard, or like their partner doesn't care, doesn't, does, either doesn't see their point of view, or if they do, does not care enough about them to acknowledge their feelings or modify their behavior. And so fights happen when people escalate. They try harder and harder and harder to simply be heard in the relationship. And though what happens is that on the other side, when one person escalates and starts getting, you know, more aggressive or louder like trying harder to get their feelings across it usually does not have the intended effect what happens is that the person on the other side typically becomes more defensive um starts to list all of the reasons why they did what they did or well why they are right and the other person is wrong which then of course leads person number one to get louder and more insistent that their feelings and perspectives are in fact valid and and you know you've been there we've all been there we're off to the races right so that is in its most basic uh sense the anatomy of every fight right so when we take this into consideration, one of the, the things that immediately becomes apparent that sometimes so obvious it gets lost in this entire conversation is that when fighting happens, it means that both people still care enough about each other and about the relationship to tangle with each other, to try to explain their point of view or explain their feelings or explain to the other person why they're right and they're wrong you know what i mean you only do that when you're invested in a relationship and i mean here's a, a scary idea but something that's true which is that couples who are really l- like in relationships that are falling apart who are heading towards divorce or a breakup very often they're not fighting 
anymore. They have already decided on some level that change is not possible here, that it's like getting blood from a stone. It's not worth their time and energy to even try anymore. So they don't. They don't fight. They let things go. If things bother them, they just swallow it and move on. Because, you know, instead of fighting about it, they are planning, planning their escape from the relationship, essentially. And and it's not not worth fighting for at that point. So if you are upset that you've just had a big fight with your partner, rest assured that one of the things this means is that th- there's still like a beating heart to this relationship. And that's a good thing. Now, if you are trying to engage with your partner and trying to be heard and understood and it feels like they're continually slamming a door in your face or they are not engaging with you or they are just repeatedly like refusing to address it, you might want to check out another podcast that I recorded a while ago, which was how to stop a divorce and save your marriage. There's a lot of advice specific in that uh, podcast, really specific to what to do if you feel like your relationship might be on 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 its last legs there so anyway it is a resource um but rest assured fighting is a good sign the other thing that it's really important to keep in mind is that when people fight when they become very like angry upset physiologically elevated like it it changes you physically right your your heart is beating your face might get flushed you know your your might even be shaking and and what happens when we get into any kind of conflict is that it does trigger a very real fight or flight response inside of all of us and one of the impacts of this fight or flight is that it changes your cognition. It very literally changes the way that your brain works. So while day to day, most of us are, you know, rational, um, intelligent people that can put coherent ideas together and express ourselves in language, but also, you know, have compassion for other people, uh, anticipate the consequences of our actions. All of these are high level skills that are really tied to a optimally functioning cortex layer of your brain. This is like the most human part of our brain, right? And when we are in a really nasty fight, our neocortex takes a back seat to our limbic system. This is a different part of your brain. This is like the animal part of our brains. It's the emotional part of our brains. And when that part is active, our language skills are impaired. Our ability to have compassion for other people goes down the drain. Our uh, ability to think about consequences of our actions stops, stops working. And this is one of the biggest reasons why in fights people say terrible things, they do hurtful things, they, um, you know, might uh, erupt or throw things or stomp around, and and they may do things in the heat of the moment that later they regret, you know, and the next time you are having a fight or in the immediate aftermath, it can be really helpful just to keep this fact in mind for two reasons. First of all, I think it helps you um, forgive yourself if you've if you've done nasty things in a fight, but also show your partner a little bit of grace that in the heat of the moment, they really are not themselves. And so to just understand anything that happens in a fight through that lens, you know, I think that that can be one step on the way to repair. It also indicates uh, one of the things that is like step number one, if you want to fix your relationship after a fight, which is to take a break, like a long break. Stop trying to talk about it. Stop trying to fix it. Stop trying to come to any sort of agreements. When you're both feeling elevated, there is some you know, old wives tale advice, like never go to sleep angry. I am telling you as a marriage counselor and couples therapist, that is complete and utter BS. Go to sleep angry. (laughs) 
I talk to couples all the time who stay up half the night and making things worse and worse and worse because they're they're trying to find the you know solution with a capital S. Oh, I just had a question. We are once again, everybody, recording this live on Instagram. And we just had a question come through, somebody asking, how long of a break should you take? And this is a great question. So my advice is to take a long enough break so that you are really legitimately calmed down. So like, you know, for me myself, it helps to like go to bed and wake up the next morning and I think so much more rationally and I know that my husband does too um you can get some exercise you know anything that you can do to like physiologically discharge some of that energy taking a shower but really the the litmus test for whether or not you've had a long enough break is whether or not you're able to do the next step that I'm about to suggest to you, which is calm down to the point where you are able to set aside your agenda and really get on your partner's side of the table. And we all know that when we are elevated and agitated and all angry, it is like impossible to do that, right? We're thinking about all of the 75 reasons why we're right and they're wrong and they're being unreasonable and how dare they. And so as long as you are cognitively in that space, you have not taken a long enough break that the goal here is to repair your relationship and heal your bond, right? So you have taken a long enough break where you've calmed down to the point where you're able to say, I have my preferences and I have my perspectives. And if I want to have a good relationship with this person, my job is to listen to them for a little while with the intention of understanding. I cannot control what they do. I can't control what they say. I can't control how they react to me. But I know, I understand that the path of healing and having a high quality relationship is helping my partner feel heard and cared for and understood by me. And that. I can do. So take a break long enough until you're able to attain that mindset. Great question. And and that is also, you know, the next step of the healing process. Take a break and calm down until you really can get on their side of the table. And and that is probably the biggest, most healing thing that any of us can do when we want to heal our relationships after a terrible fight is set aside our agenda and focus on listening. So that means coming back into the situation, assuming now that your partner has had a, a break as well and they're you know calm enough so that they can talk instead of yelling. Although do remember that they probably haven't had the benefit of listening to this podcast and working on themselves the way that you had. So they might not be coming back into this with the intention of understanding you. You're going to have to take the responsibility for this. So to come back in and say, you know what, that was awful, wasn't it? The last thing in the world I want to do is fight with you. And I'm realizing that, you know, when I was getting elevated, I was getting very focused on what I was thinking and what I was feeling. And, you know, if if you're open to it, I am going to just not talk for a while. And I would love to hear more about what it was that you were trying to tell me during our fight, because I don't think I was in a place where I could let it in, you know? And, and really, I mean, yeah, hold on. Just think about it. If your partner, after an argument, came back to you and said something like that, what would you do? They would have to scrape you up off the floor, wouldn't you? You'd probably be like, wow, that was awesome. <gasps> yeah, I do actually want to tell you all about how I was thinking and feeling. So thank you very much. Where should we start? You know, I mean, that's what we all want is to be heard and understood and cared for. And you can do that in your relationship, which is amazing. Another really important strategy and thing to keep in mind is to 
give yourself permission to apologize. You know, I think that some people get kind of wound up by this, this idea, you know, that they shouldn't have to apologize because they were only, you know, behaving this way because their partner started it or, or they made me do it or that if I wouldn't have yelled if they hadn't been such a jerk, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, I mean, there's, there's that old saying, like winning the battle and losing the war. And I think that in order to have a really high quality relationship, it is very important to take responsibility for ourselves and to acknowledge the times when maybe we didn't behave that well, even if we had all the reasons in the world, right? And the truth is, everybody believes that they have a reason for behaving the way that they do. It's just that our reasons make sense to us, right? And so to be able to apologize courageously for things that you did in the heat of the moment that might have felt hurtful or insensitive to your partner. That will go such a long way. Now, another piece of advice I'd like to give you is to think about using this experience, like having a fight, as an actual doorway for creating positive change in your relationship. I mean, listen, you had a conflict because there was an issue, right? Something wasn't happening the way that one of you wanted it to, or one of you got your feelings hurt, or there was a misunderstanding or miscommunication. But it's indicative that there's actually something going on that needs to be addressed when couples fight. And this, again, is very, very positive. I, as a marriage counselor, worry much more about couples who don't fight when people don't talk about things that bother them when they sweep it under the rug when they don't want to rock the boat when they you know don't want to be offensive that is actually not good for anyone personally and it's also not good for the relationship because what happens is that people start holding things in they start not talking about how they feel so they become increasingly resentful and annoyed but if they're not talking about it, those emotions don't go away. I mean, you guys, we've been talking a lot about, you know, how to manage your emotions and subconscious ideas. And, and this is a good example of what happens is that when people are kind of holding in their emotions related to a, a, a relationship, they always come out sideways, right? So it's important that you talk about this and when a fight happens i mean you know the fight itself can be a regrettable incident and there's certainly such a thing as toxic conflict and fighting that makes things worse and and that doesn't mean that there aren't still important things that need to be talked about and addressed and resolved we are talking about how to heal your relationship after a fight. And one of the things that we just paused on was the importance of taking it seriously, you know? So we're not going to do that in the moment. Uh, we're going to give everybody a break so that they can calm down, you know, and start feeling like themselves again and access a more compassionate mindset. But, but then sit back down again when the time is right and, oh good, I'm glad that improved the audio. So sit back down when the time is right. And first of all, start by seeking to understand your partner and really listening to what they are feeling is problematic. Um, is it the way that you are communicating? Is it the fact that you guys have some things to work out in terms of, you know, the day-to-day -day stuff of your partnership? A lot of conflict in long-term relationships is related to things like, you know, who does what around the house? Or how do we spend money as a couple? Or how do we prioritize our time and energy with our friends or with our activities? Um, what kind of boundaries do we need to set, set with our extended family even? And, and um, all couples need to have a series of conversations with each other in order to hash those things out and negotiate and compromise. And so to come back to the table after a fight and, and see if you guys can do some 
really important work around creating positive change in your relationship. It will help the conflict turn from something that was a regrettable incident into a doorway to new growth and positive change. It becomes a growth moment for both of you. Another opportunity for a growth moment is to do some almost analysis around how the fight started and got so bad in the beginning. I mean, a lot of times as a marriage counselor, what I do with people who, you know, are in a pattern of having unproductive conflict is that we sit down and figure out what are the triggers, you know? Like there's a difference between constructive conflict and toxic, unproductive conflict. And so when it's a yucky, bad fight, um, what happens before that fight starts? Uh, just between me and you and the wall, you would be amazed at how many couples report that they have really yucky fights when they've been drinking you know? And so to begin to identify some of these patterns, like some couples, it, it's late at night, you know, when we're both tired, or it's early in the morning when we're both rushing around trying to start our day, or, or it's around this particular topic. And just beginning to get some insight into what are our triggers, it can help you gain some self-awareness, so that you can then handle those particular moments a little bit differently or have some new rules in your relationship. Like, we're not going there after we've both had a beer or two. We're just not. We're going to talk about it tomorrow. And so you can use that rule when, when inflammatory things, you know, start to get thrown around after you guys have been drinking or if it's late at night. It's absolutely okay to say, you know what? I hear you. I know this is a problem. I want to talk to you about this. What are you doing tomorrow? You know what I mean? So that you can find a time and a place where you're both more likely to have a, a better better experience with each other. So those are a few tips for how to repair your relationship after a fight. We talked about honoring, you know, the reason why fights happen and taking breaks so that you can calm down. Coming into a compassionate mindset is of utmost importance where you're seeking to understand and then entering a phase where you're really using the experience to grow and understand each other and ideally find new solutions to old problems so that it will minimize the the necessity for more fighting to happen in the the future because the great thing is that once you guys have kind of hashed out some of this stuff there's just less and less to fight about as your relationship goes on so those are a few tips I have a couple more things I could share but I thought I'd pause for just a moment to see if anybody has any questions We're taking just a moment to see if there are listener questions that have come through. And I'm also going to use this opportunity to pull up my, my question bank. I oftentimes have um, people send in questions and comments through the blog at growingself.com and through Instagram at Dr. Lisa Marie Bobby. And so I'm just going to pull up a couple. Here's a question. A listener writes in, I'm married and I'm so frustrated with our trouble fighting that I don't even want to talk about it anymore. Um, and I hear you. And if I might add, when you get to that place where you're like, I don't even want to talk about it anymore. I don't want to deal with it anymore. That is a sign to me that you are beginning to withdraw your attachment to this relationship. And that means that you're kind of on the exit ramp emotionally from a relationship a lot of times. Uh, certainly, I don't know all of the details about your particular situation. And so take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. But if you are experiencing persistent 
um, just like it's impossible to talk about anything or resolve problems. If you aren't in couples counseling, it is absolutely imperative that you get in couples counseling because many times, um, you know, when, when couples try to work through issues on their own, particularly if it's like this kind of situations where there's a lot of water under the bridge and there have been hurtful things that have happened and, and it's, it's like a tender feeling place for both people. As soon as it comes back up again, people begin feeling triggered physiologically. And for the reasons that we discussed in the beginning of the podcast, it, it makes it so, so hard, like almost impossible to have a productive conversation. People immediately go into this like elevated place where they're defensive, they're angry, they are hurt, you know. Um, and one, I think, of the, I mean, there are so many benefits to doing couples work, but one of the biggest ones is that sometimes simply the presence of a third person in the room can have a very, very calming impact on both people. Like, I mean, if I were sitting here with you and your husband, um, we would be taking turns. I would say, okay, so now the first thing we're going to do is that I'd like for you to, to share your feelings about this issue and you, it's your turn to listen. And it really like almost forces couples to go into that listening mindset that can be so difficult to achieve when both people are really feeling stressed and triggered. Um, when people get really emotional in the room, I will commonly be like, okay, time out. Let's everybody do some deep breathing. Let's do some grounding so that you're able to talk about this constructively. Also with a marriage counselor, you know, we have... Um, boundaries. I mean, I will not let people call each other names or, uh, you know, engage in really hurtful language. So the marriage counseling room becomes like a safe place where people can talk more openly and more vulnerably. And I think also, you know, one of the things that a good marriage counselor will do, I myself do a lot of this, is it's almost like interpreting one partner for each other, you know, like um, one partner might might say what, what they usually say, right, which, which just bounces off their their husband or wife who's heard it so many times they don't even hear it. But then what I will say is that it, it sounds like you're feeling really hurt by this. And in these moments when he does this, you really feel uncared for and alone, don't you? I mean, that's what I'm hearing is really underneath the frustration. It's just that you keep trying and trying. And, and just at the end of the day, it's, it's like, it feels like he doesn't even care enough to listen, you know? And so when I can say something like that in the session with your partner who can hear me I think sometimes in a different way because they don't have that emotional reaction to me you know like I'm just a well-intentioned stranger really um, but I think also in my professional role they can hear me saying how I hear and interpret what you are saying and and kind of like understand it on a different level that helps them perceive you in a different way as as you know compared to this p person who may you know just seem angry or unhappy with them and it doesn't matter what they try you know like it and it starts to uh, point out the possibility for new opportunities you know, like a different kind of conversation. So anyway, listen, really, just, just because you haven't been able to work through this on your own and you feel like giving up, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is the end. And I would hate for you to make the mistake that I also see people doing, which is throwing in the towel of a relationship based on what they have experienced so far without the benefit of couples counseling. So Anyway, give it a try. Um, I will also say, just as a resource, um, one really easy, like low key thing that a lot of people do to get this ball rolling on our website on growingself.com, I have a free relationship quiz 
um, if you go to growingself.com and go to the free resources tab, you'll see how healthy is your relationship quiz. It's totally free. It's probably like 20 questions and it assesses your relationship in a bunch of different areas. It assesses the emotional health of your relationship. Um, it assesses the emotional safety of your relationship, your communication, uh, the presence or absence of negative behaviors that can be indicative of whether or not a, a relationship is spiraling down. Um, it also measures the level of kindness and generosity in your relationship, shared goals and values, uh, your teamwork. So, I mean, it's a brief quiz. It, it's actually just a much shorter version of one that we often use that's like, oh my gosh, two, 200 and some questions with our, our couples counseling and premarital clients here at growing self but it really gives you an accurate snapshot of where you guys are now but the thing that's really great is that you can also um if you want you can enter in your partner's uh email information and they will be sent that quiz or like an invitation to take the quiz they'll just get a little email that says hey so and so you know jane took this quiz and has invited you to do the same it's often a doorway for couples to have meaningful conversations about how to create positive changes in their relationship we hope that it helps you both so that's all it is but then if they like walk through the quiz and then they'll get the results um you know you guys can talk about it together they will not see your results you will not see their results but you could share it with each other and sometimes I think too even just the act of taking the quiz itself and then like the follow-up information that's sent around like this is what it means to have good communication in a relationship and this is why it's so important like even that little bit can be just like very low-key um so meaning like it, it doesn't elicit defensiveness, you know, people can be more receptive to it. And also it can be very instructive. I mean, I've had people literally just take that quiz and like get some follow up information, like basic education around communication and relationships and, and feel that their relationship has benefited as a result. So that might also be a, a strategy to begin to heal your relationship if there's been a lot of fighting. Um, another listener question that came in is uh, from someone, a man, who wrote in through Instagram, it looks like, and, and he asked, you know, it feels like there can be periods of, of quiet and calm in our relationship, but when I give her an opinion about something, I feel like my wife you know, turns the guns on me and that she gets very angry and upset with me and it really like ruins the moment and that this happens almost every day. I feel that talking to her is like walking on a minefield. Um, he says, you know, that I'm very devoted to this marriage. I'm not wanting out of it. And I know that my wife has hurts that she's carried around, but but I feel like I have tried to talk to her about her, how hurtful this is to me and I just can't get through to her despite my efforts to listen to her and rephrase and, you know, like trying to be a good friend for her. So do you have any tips? So this is hard, isn't it? And I think that, you know, it's one thing to try to fix your relationship after a really hard fight that happens like, you know, once or twice. But what this person is describing is a situation where it feels like they are fighting all the time and that, you know, this guy is trying to have a positive relationship with his partner, but it feels like she's having really um, like angry, negative, upsetting reactions to him. So my thoughts on this situation, and again, here's a caveat, like I don't know all the backstory, I do not know all the details, um, a couple of different possibilities. First of all, he mentioned that his wife has had some bad experiences with people or different situations in the past. And, you know, this can be um, possibly point to the fact that if she has unfinished emotional business with the past or like we've been talking about on this podcast lately subconscious uh, core beliefs or expectations that are flaring up in these moments 
um, you know, in a relationship, she is going to get very elevated and go into that fight or flight space without even realizing that she's doing it. And also without realizing the impact that it is having on her husband, particularly if he's really invested and in kind of not rocking the boat and having a good relationship with her. So my advice in this situation would be for him to make an appointment with a couples counselor who can see both of you and so that you can talk about what's happening and allow the couples counselor to begin doing an assessment asking questions and seeking to understand what's going on um, something like doing an, a genogram could be really helpful a genogram is where we basically like draw out family relationships and like kind of sketch out a timeline of life experiences even and any good couples counselor worth their salt will be doing some of this in the early stages of couples counseling to kind of figure out where is this coming from? And so, you know, that that if there is unresolved stuff happening from her history, the couple's counselor, counselor will be able to um, observe that and then talk about that and the impact that it's having on the functioning of their relationship in the here and now. There may be opportunity to talk about this and develop some skills and strategies in the context of couples work, like doing this together can actually be really beneficial. Or the couples counselor may suggest that the, the wife do some individual work um, if there are like deeper things that she needs to work on to really be able to get herself in a better place where she's less reactive. That's one possibility. Now, the other possibility, though, and this happens a lot, too, is that um, this gentleman's wife may be having negative reactions to him that don't make sense to him because he doesn't know what she's getting upset about. But she may be having a negative reaction to something that he is saying or doing or not doing or an expectation that she has or hope that she has of him that he's not meeting. Or there could be some things that happened in the past of the relationship that were very wounding to her that are no longer in the forefront of his mind, but that are very much in the forefront of her. So the other thing that I would suspect is that there is actually more to the story and that, you know, what I have found time and time and time again in my in my professional work is that the only time people really don't make sense is when you don't yet have all the information. And so this guy is saying, my wife is just freaking out and I don't know why. And, you know, there, there might be other things here that you don't know yet. And But again, I think the path forward, for whatever reason, you're not hearing what it is uh, in, in your day-to-day -day life. She's just having these like weird things where she's getting mad at you over and over again and you don't know why. Um, so she's not talking to you about about what it is. And there are many you know, reasons possibly for that. But again, the, the way to kind of crack into that is to get both of you into the type of emotionally safe environment with a neutral third party who can begin doing a really um, thoughtful and safe feeling assessment of the relationship to try to understand what is going on and digging down underneath the surface. You know, a lot of times couples counselors will, will schedule an individual appointment with each person, you know, to talk privately around what is going on, you know, uh, to, to just begin to make sense of what they're seeing in the relationship, and then they can help you develop a path forward. So, so the last couple of questions that we got here were, were more specific to like, ways of mending, like deeper issues in a relationship and, and, you know, to get professional support is is often part of that answer. But we talked about many things during our time together today. And many of them you can absolutely do on your own to heal a relationship after a fight, but also really lead to longer lasting and more enduring positive changes in your relationship. So I gave you a lot of suggestions, also the resource to the quiz. Again, you can find that on our website, growingself.com on the free resources tab. Um, take that free quiz and you'll get instant access to your results and also follow up information. 
And I'll be back in touch with you again on the next episode of the Love, Happiness, and Success podcast. Next week, just in time for the holidays, we're going to be talking about how to deal with judgment in case you are going into a high-impact social situation or dealing with in-laws or extended family that they can get a little bit judgy with you. We're going to be talking about how to cope. All right. Thanks so much, everybody who's joined me on Instagram live today and to all my, my listeners, and I'll be back in touch soon. Bye-bye.